Come on, give the Lord another hand. I want to use for our subject today, faith. That's why I sung that song, Only Believe. Faith, the shield of protection. Faith, the shield of protection. Amen. There's something about faith. Faith, we always want to be, we always want to be protected. How many of y'all want to be protected? Amen. Amen. We always need protection. And you need protection because once you come into the truth and, and to the knowledge and the understanding of the most highest word, you're going to need some protection reason why you're going to need some protection, the moment you lay down Christmas, you're going to need some protection. The moment that you say that I'm not going to deal with that Easter no more, you are going to need some protection. The moment that you say I want to eat clean according to God's dietary law, you, my brothers and sisters, are going to need some protection. For Satan have this have desire to sift you as wheat. The moment when you get on this road, the only protection that you're going to have is faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? So let's open up this lesson today. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, and we're going to get some understanding uh, pertaining to this lesson. The book of Hebrews, let's go to the 11th chapter of Hebrews, and we're going to go to verses 1 through 3. Faith, the shield of protection. Now, when we say a shield of protection, I expect, and I'm going to show you today how faith can shield you, how sh faith can protect you, how faith can guard you, how faith can be a hedge around you, but you got to believe. Amen? Hebrews 11 chapter, read verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of, substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Keep going. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were, were framed by the word of God. Uh-huh. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh-huh. Why? Uh, Skip down to verse 5, uh, number 6. Number 6. Skip down to verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh-huh. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let me share this with you, church. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. But when you hope for it, there's no evidence that you see it. Amen? And this is how the elders of the church obtained a good report. They were noted for faith. When you read all throughout the scriptures, the elders were noted for their faith. And it was through faith that we understand the words that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The nations were framed by the word of God. We, if you look here, Abraham by faith, by faith, being yet in his old age and his wife being in their old age, by faith they believed that he was going to become the father of many nations. And that she too was going to come through the motherhood of her. Not, not Hagar, but through Sarah. And I'm here to tell you today that if you don't have faith, it is impossible. You might as well just throw in the towel. It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God 
You must believe that he is. You, you see, this is my whole foundation, Elder Mac, because when I start to debate with people about this here Bible, amen, if you don't believe in the book, I can't deal with you. Because this is my faith foundation. I believe in this book. I believe that he is the creator of the world. And if you take that away from me, then, then, then I can't even talk to you because my whole foundation is built upon this book. My whole foundation. The apostle said it this way. If there is no resurrection, then why am I preaching? But I got faith in the resurrection. Why? Because Jesus himself was crucified, buried, and resurrected. And if there be no resurrections, brothers and sisters, then, then there's no use us being here. I'm here to be resurrected. You want to know why I'm standing here? I'm standing here to be resurrected. You want to know I why we talk about the truth? Because I want to be among the resurrected. And if I die before he comes, I want to die in him. And I want to hear the sound of the trumpet because the dead in Christ, hallelujah, are going to rise first. This is why I'm doing this because I want to be sealed in my forehead. That when the trumpet call sounds, I want to know that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And if I'm still living, if I'm still living, he says, I show you a mystery. You should not all sleep, but you're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling in the eye. This corrupt body will put on incorruption and this mortal will put, put on immortality. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you can give him a hand clap. Come on, give him a hand clap. And I'm in this because I have faith. I believe that. You cannot take that away from me. I believe that. My whole, my whole living is based upon that. Don't take that away from me. And number one, you can't take away, you cannot take it away from me because I believe it. I wake up in the morning believing it. In the afternoon, I believe it. When I lay down to rest, I believe it. Paul was talking to the Galatians. And he had just taught these Gentiles about believing in Christ. About believing in Jesus. And they came in and somebody started to shake them. Church, you cannot let nobody shake your faith. Once you know that December the 25th is not in the Bible, don't let lights on every house in the neighborhood weaken you. Hello, hello, hello. Don't let going through the mall, let that weaken you. Oh, yeah, it can weaken you. Amen, everybody at the job is having a little Christmas party and everybody's in what they call the Christmas spirit and you know good and well it don't exist. You know good and well it's a pagan holiday. You know good and well Emperor Constantine brought it into the church and camouflaged it to be around the birth of Christ and December the 25th is not in the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. So where did it come from? And once you come to that understanding, stand on the faith. Stand on it. I don't care what the neighbors do. I don't care what the, what the rest of the family does. I don't care what name they put across it. I don't care what banner they put on it. Stand on faith. You got to believe this. So he was trying to teach the Colossians. Let's go over to the third chapter of Galatians, verses 1 and 2. Read verses 1 and 2, Galatians. Listen to this. Because the Galatians, he had taught them. He went to them. Paul's commission was to go to the Galatians. But, but the issue is when Paul went to the Gentiles, he found himself having to circle back around. Amen. Sometimes you got to circle back around when you teach folk. Listen to this, verses 1 and 2. Oh, foolish Galatians, uh -huh. who hath bewitched you? Who hath bewitched you? Keep going. That ye should not obey the truth. Uh -huh. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath 
hath been evidently set forth, crucified and, among you. Uh huh. This only would I learn of you. This is the thing I want to know from you. Listen to this. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, uh -huh. or by hearing of faith? Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of the faith? How did you receive this thing? Now, some people don't realize this is not talking about the commandments. This is talking about the sacrificial law. Because when you read the history of Galatians, Galatians were now turning around to do some old practices that they used to be used to. Amen. Going back to string, strangling animals and, and, and having blood. And this is why Paul had to say to the, to the Gentiles, when you go into the marketplace and, and, and don't even ask uh, how the meat was killed. Don't even ask where it came by. But if you find out that it was used to sacrifice uh, up unto a pagan god, then don't eat it. Other than that, just don't ask. Just buy it. Because idolatry was prevalent in the land. Keep going. Just, uh, uh, skip down to verse 11. Because this is what I want to let you know. Listen to this. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. You are not justified by sacrificing animals in the sight of God. See, justification means to be made right. It's amazing how people took this to mean it's talking about the commandments. But that's not the subject of discussion. As we said this morning, the major subject of discussion in the letters was about sacrificing animals, which is the sacrificial law, and whether or not I sit with you because you haven't been circumcised yet. So he says, is a man justified by killing these animals? See, when you break the law, then you're wrong. And when you're wrong, you need to be made right again. But let me tell you something, justification don't come through sacrificing animals. In the sight of God, it is heaven. For how should the just live? But that no man is justified by the law in uh, the sight of God. Uh-huh, why? It is, it is evident. For the, just, for the just shall live by because faith. Because the just shall live by faith. The issue is Jesus is the son of God. Jesus shed his blood. For the remission of our sins. It's through the atonement. And you got to believe that. You must believe that. Even Isaiah said in the 53rd chapter, who's going to believe our report? Who's going to believe this report? To whom is, uh, uh, is the arm of the Lord revealed? And he let you know because he was wounded for and he was bruised for and the chastisement of our peace is upon. Amen. So he is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And only he, only he can cover your sins. An animal can't do it. A lamb can't do it. A bullock can't do it. The shedding of the, the blood of goats and bullocks can never, can never take away sins. Can't do it. Skip down to verse number 19. Listen to this. Wherefore then serveth the law? Then what's the purpose of sacrificing animals? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come down. Listen. When Adam sinned, then we had to bring in the sacrificial law. And the reason why we had to bring in the sacrificial law, because an animal had to kill be killed on the very day that Adam had to take some skin and cover himself. Amen. An animal was killed. When he says, well, where aren't you, Adam? Well, they, they turned around and covered themselves with skin because they realized they were naked. And an animal had to be killed in order for that to get that, to get that clothed. And so from the very beginning of time, the sacrificing of animals was added because of what? Because of transgression. Because of transgression. And what is transgression? Where there's no law, there is no what? Sin. Yeah. For sin is what? The transgression yeah. of the law. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap. So read verse 19 again. What's the purpose of what? 
Wherefore then serveth the law? Why was it added? It was added because of transgression. how long? Till the seed should come down to whom the promise was made. Now there's going to be a seed that's going to come down to whom the promise was made. And what, what about it? And it was ordained by angels in the hand of, the me of a mediator. Now wherefore, now let's skip down to verse number 24. Because the sacrificial law taught us something. Listen to this. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The sacrificial law brought you to Christ. The commandments don't have to bring you to Christ because Jesus was the one that gave you the commandments. So the, 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 uh, the, the law don't need to bring you to Christ. What brought you to Christ was the schoolmaster, which was the sacrificial law. The law was our schoolmaster, to bring you to Christ that you might be what? Read it. That we might be justified by faith. That you might be justified by faith. Faith in who? Faith in Jesus. Amen. Faith that he is the redeemer. Faith that his blood is shed for many. I believe that. You cannot make me change from it. And that is the shield of my protection. That is my hope. That is my salvation. The sacrificing of animals is not my salvation. Amen. The killing of uh, 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 goats and boars, that's not my salvation. My salvation comes from my shield of protection, which is my faith in Christ. Let's go on. Let's go on over. Uh, uh, keep on. But after that, faith Verse is come. Verse 25. But what? But after that, faith has come. But now that Jesus has come, guess what? We are no longer under a schoolmaster. I don't need the sacrificial law. It's come. After Jesus has come, after I believe in him, after I accept him, after I believe that they pierced him in his side and out came blood and water, which is for the remission of our sins, after I believe that, Brother Reggie, guess what? I don't need to be no longer under what? Schoolmaster. And the law, being the schoolmaster, is the sacrificial system. I don't need to do that no more. Why? For ye are all children, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And this Christ Jesus. makes everybody, everybody, this makes Gentiles, Galatians, this makes Israelites, this makes everybody children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Let's go over to Romans, the third chapter. Romans, the third chapter. Read verse 28. Let's skip down to verse 31. Listen to this. Therefore, we may conclude that a man is justified by faith. So now you are justified by faith. You are made right by faith. You are made right. When you see the word faith, it's faith in Jesus. You are made right by your faith in Jesus. You got some Jews that's over there in the land who saying that they are Jews and, and they don't even believe in Jesus, but yet they don't even sacrifice animals. Something's wrong with that picture. Because the only way that you cannot sacrifice animals is if you believe in Jesus. Because there's a law in Leviticus, the fourth chapter, that whenever you sin, you must bring a lamb. You must bring a bullock. You must bring an oxen. You got to bring something to atone your sins. And the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. So therefore, I have to conclude that a man is justified by what? By faith. Without what? Without the deeds of the Without law. Without doing the sacrificial system. Because it's either one or the other. You got to believe it or not believe it. You just can't stop doing something without believing in something. Skip down to verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do I now say that the commandments don't have to be kept because now I believe in Jesus? God forbid. God forbid. What do I do? Yea, we establish the I law. I establish the law. Why do I establish the law? Because I got a redeemer. That's my faith. That is my shield of protection. Let's go over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. 
Because church, you're going to have to stand on this. You're going to have to put this on. You're going to have to clothe yourself with this faith. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to walk in faith, not by sight. You're going to have to walk by this. Amen. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 11 through 17. Listen to this. Put on the whole armor of God. This is your armor. Can I say that again? This is your armor. This is your shield of protection. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh Uh-huh. Why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Uh but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What do we got to do then? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now, we have to put this on. You got to wear this. You got to walk at, walk in it. You, you wake up in the morning, you got to put this on. Because faith is your shield of protection. That's what's going to protect you. You got to believe it. You got to walk it. You got to think it. You got to know it. You got to pray it. You got to sing it. You got to shout in it, scream in it, holler in it. Whatever you got to do, it's faith, 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 faith. For without faith, it is impossible to believe God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. That's why the apostle said, who should separate me? You can't separate me from this. This is a part of me. This is a part of my bloodline. This is a part of my spiritual DNA. Read on. Stand therefore. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about. Stand. Stand in the storm. Stand in all of the trials and tribulations. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. Uh And having on the breastplate of righteousness. What about your feet? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And now, what else do we have to do? Above all, taking the shield of faith. Is the shield of faith, which is your protection. Faith is your shield of protection. Above all, take the shield of protection. Keep going. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Every fiery dart. Let me tell you something, church. That shield of faith is something that you can put up against anything that comes at you. You got to believe that God is God and God's word is true. He says, listen, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. You got to believe that. You got to believe that no weapon formed. Didn't say it wasn't going to be formed, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You got to believe that because faith is your shield of protection. Keep going. And take the helmet of salvation. Yes. And the sword of the spirit, uh-huh. which is the word of God. Which is the what? Word of God. See, that's the word. You got to believe in this word because your sword of the spirit is the word of God. And you got to take the word of God. You got to bind it about your neck, write it upon the table of your heart so that you can find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Let's go over to the book of Peter. Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Uh which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, that's our lively hope. Our lively hope is our faith and belief by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If he didn't rise from the dead, you're not going to rise from the dead. And if there be no resurrection, as the apostle said, then my preaching is in vain. Keep going. To an inheritance uncorruptible and Uh undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Uh Uh-huh. Who, for, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It's because you are kept by the power of God. How are we kept by the power of God? It's based on faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Skip down to verse 9. Because let me tell you something. This is something that just you don't pick up and drop. 
You need to take this all the way till you walk your last walk on this earth. You need to take this faith all the way till you breathe your last breath. Amen? Amen. If you are on a sick bed, you better take it with you. You better die with it. You better grasp hold of it. Let it be something that you hold on to. Let it go down in history that you held on to it even through your last breath. I don't care if they stone you to death. Hold on to it. Deacon Stephen, they sit there and they falsely accused him. And they said, brother, you're teaching that Jesus did away with the law. Now what, now, what law ye was talking about, you, you're saying that Jesus did away with the sacrificial law. And, 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 and Stephen says, yes, he did. Yes, he did. And they brought him in. And you know who was there? Paul. His name was Saul then. And they took off their coats so that they can stone him and threw them at the feet of Saul before he became Paul so he can watch their coats. And you know what they did? They picked up stones and they began to stone Deacon Stephen. But through all of the pain, all of the agony, he looked to the hills from whence cometh his help. And his help came from up on high. And he went down in history. This is what you got to do, church. You got to take this belief all the way to the end. Take it to your grave. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. And as they were stoning him, he looked up. He looked up. This is what becomes your protection. This is what comes your consolation. He looked up. And he said, forgive them. You know, that takes a whole lot. That takes a whole lot. That's faith. See, when you realize this ain't really about you, this is about the adversary using you to come at me. But I'm here to tell you I cannot be shaken. I cannot be moved. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. When the storms of life are raging, I shall not be moved. Faith is your shield of protection. That's what it is. Are you finished reading that? Where are we at now? Verse 9. Verse 9. Skip down to verse 9. Because you got to take this all the way to the end. Listen to this. Receiving at the end of your faith. Receiving the end of your faith. Even the salvation of your souls. Because you're not saved until you get to the end. That's when you really saved. He that endureth till the end shall be saved. That means you haven't dropped it. That means you haven't given up. That means you, you haven't put it to the side. Because I'm here to tell you, Jesus is not hiding it from you. You're going to have to hold on to this faith. Jesus let the disciples know, listen, this is something you're going to have to, to, to go through, brother. Go over to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Luke, the 22nd chapter. 31 and 32. This is something you're going to have to take with you. Amen. See, if you know what you're getting into, then you'll know how to handle it. Luke, the 22nd chapter, read verses 31 and 32. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold. He's Satan, talking to Peter, Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you. Now, Satan's got a desire to have you. If he got a desire to have Peter upon whose rock the church is built, Believe me, he has a desire for you too. He has desire to have you. That what? That me has, that he may sift you as wheat. Uh huh. But, but I have but, prayed but for you. Notice this. Notice this. Jesus didn't say, "Listen here, I'm going. I'm going to put. Uh, I'm in charge. You can't touch my disciple." Notice Jesus didn't say, "Listen here, uh, I know you want him, but you ain't going to never be able to touch him because." 
I'm going to put uh, 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 I'm going to put a shield around him and a wall around him and a fence around him. But what did Jesus say to Peter? But I have prayed for thee. I prayed for you. Why am I praying for you? That thy faith fail not. That your faith fail not. That your faith fail not. I'm praying for you, brother. Satan is going to come. But I pray that your faith fail not. I'm praying for you, sister, because Satan is going to come. And I pray that your faith fail not. I pray for your mother and father because your children are going to be used and they're going to discount you sometimes. But I pray that you hold on and don't lose your faith. I pray for you because sometimes the doctor's not going to give you such good news. But I pray that your faith fail not. I pray for you because when you got all the money in the bank and you ready to buy the house, they may say no. But I pray that your faith fail not. I pray when people turn their back on you because all of a sudden you don't want to eat pork no more. All of a sudden, you don't want to celebrate Christmas no more. All of a sudden, you don't want to keep Easter no more. All of a sudden, you're going to leave the lobster, lobster alone. You're not getting the invitations to hang out with the family no more. I pray that your faith fail not. That's what I pray. Read on. And when thou art converted. And when you get this, when you got it, when you are converted, when you realize it don't matter, what do I want you to do? Strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen your brother. Let me tell you something. When Satan came with the sons of God and came to report, he says, have you considered my servant Job? He didn't say you couldn't touch him. Satan says, yeah, you got a heads around him. But let me touch all the possessions that he got. I'll make him curse you to your face. And you know what happened? Job held on to his faith. Lost his sheep. Lost his children. Lost his house. Lost his car. Lost his Mercedes. Can I bring it up to you all till today? Amen. Foreclosed on, lost the job, business failed, hallelujah, didn't have enough state farm, and you lost it. But you know what? I believe. And he didn't change Job. So he comes a second time. He says, well, listen here. Skin for skin. Let me go after his body. I make him curse you from his lips. And did you not know boils came from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet? And all he did was took a, a little gadget and start to just scrape the pulse and the scabs off of him. Sitting there in pain and agony and anguish. And his wife, who loved him so much, looked at him and just said, Son, why don't you just curse God and die? But he said, you speak like the foolish women. For God I live and for God I'm going to die. Through pain, suffering, anguish, agony. I'm standing on the promises because my faith is my shield of protection. You got to believe this. You got to know this. And he says, listen here. We, I'm still serving God. What I'm going through, he's still God. What I'm experiencing, he's still God. House foreclosed, I, he's still God. Lost in pain, he's still God. Children acting up, he's still God. Trouble in the marriage, he's still God. Trouble in the family, he's still God. Hard-headed children, he is still God. He's still God. You got to know this. You got to believe this. You got to breathe this. Still God. 
I'm going to show you how faith is not something new. It's not just a new testament thing. It's not something we just see over there. Let's go, let's go back because he says there's a good report among the fathers. That means the ancients. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. And let me show you how this thing works. Because when you activate it, you got to activate it. It's something that you have. It is a shield of protection. Faith is a shield of protection. But you have to activate it. Go to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. We're going to stay in this chapter just for a minute or two. Read verses 1. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse 1. So you can get the understanding of how faith works. And this is not something new among the children of Israel. Listen to this. It came to pass after this also uh -huh. that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat into ba uh -huh. to battle. Now they're going to come up. Folk are going to come up against you to battle. Amen. Things are going to happen. Amen. But let me tell you this. Your outlook determines your outcome. Amen. Your outlook determines your outcome. If you see the glass that has liquid in it and it's midway between the bottom and the top, you can either see it half empty or you can see it half full. But your outlook determines your outcome. You see, if you got a half a tank of gas, some people can say, ooh, I'm almost on empty. I don't want to go nowhere. Oh, and you can sit there and the rest of the next two or three days, you're sitting there in panic mode. But now if you see that same half a tank, you say, oh, I got a, I'm half full. I'm good. You keep driving. You're not wary. You go every place you need to go. You see the difference between that? Because your outlook determines your outcome. Either you see the glass half empty or you see the glass half full. In this case, Jehoshaphat had, he had the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other besides the Ammonites came up against them to battle. Skip down to verse number three. And Jehoshaphat feared. And he feared. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you're going to get afraid. But your outlook determines your outcome. He, he, was, he feared, and what, what did he do? And set himself to seek the Lord uh -huh. and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Uh -huh. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask the help of the Lord. Even out of all of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now, they came to seek the Lord. They said, listen, now we can't win this battle because we're too weak. We're outnumbered. We don't have the tools. We don't have what it takes. And one thing you cannot stop. When the enemy is coming, they are coming. Amen. They're going to come. You see, when you get news in the mailbox, sometimes I ignore the mailbox. Amen. But let me tell you something. When the bill collectors come, if you don't answer the mailbox, they're going to call your phone. How they get your phone number, I don't know. But you can't walk around just not looking and answering at your phone. All the time. You're going to have to respond. You're going to have to, you, you're not going, you cannot live underneath the rock. So what they did was they began, they went to the Lord. And they said, listen, we got to call upon a fast. And they called a fast. Skip down to verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, uh -huh. the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, of the sons of Asaph what came, did they do? came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Now the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came right when they were in this fast and prayer in the midst of the congregation. And what did he say in verse 15? And he said, uh -huh. hearken, hearken ye all Judah uh -huh. and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Now I want y'all to listen to me because now if you listen, see sometimes Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. See, I want you to hear this. What did he say? Thus saith the Lord unto you. Now listen, uh-huh. Be not afraid nor dismayed. I don't dismayed, want you to be afraid. Nor I don't want you to be dismayed. By reason of this great multitude. Why? For the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> the battle is not yours. This is God's battle. Some things that you are going through, it's not yours. It's God's. Yeah. So 
some of the sickness and the pain and the agony that you're going through, it's really not yours. It's God's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not yours. It's God's. Skip down to verse number 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. I don't want you to fight in this battle. Oh, the battle was going to come, by the way. Can, can, to tell your neighbor, say the battle's coming. The storms are going to come. Trials are going to come. Tribulations are going to come. Persecution is going to come. Folk are going to lie on you. It's coming. People are going to talk rumors on you. Oh, it's coming. It's not going to stop. Oh, it's going to come. Read on. Set yourselves. But I want you to set yourself. See, sometimes you got to just set yourself. You got to brace yourself. You got to get prepared for the storm. You got to put up the shutters. You can't stop the storm coming. It's coming. But you got to put up the shutters. You can't stop the storm coming, but go get some water. You're not going to stop the electric from going off. Go get a flashlight. You're not going to stop the gas lines. Go get some gas in the car. Set yourself. It's coming, brother. It's coming, sister. Set yourself. Stand ye still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. I don't want you to lift up a finger. I don't want you to do nothing. I don't want you to make a phone call. Don't get into this. This is not yours. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Because the Lord's going to be with you. Oh, you're going to the back. I don't want you to get no sword. Don't, get, don't take your pruning hooks and don't make a, a spear. Don't take a sword. Don't go do none of that. I want you to do nothing. Sometimes doing nothing is the right thing to do if you just believe God. He says, I want you to stand still. See the salvation of the Lord who's going to be with you. Keep going. O Judah and Jerusalem, uh -huh. fear not, nor be dismayed. I don't want you to fear. I don't want you to be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them. But I want you to go out. That don't make no sense. But let me tell you something. Having faith don't make sense sometimes. Believing and doing what God says do don't make sense. It don't make no logic resolution. You want me to go out and fight in a battle, but you don't want me to do nothing? You don't want me to take no war tools? You don't want me to take nothing, but you want me to go out to this battle? Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. Why? Tomorrow, go out against them, for uh -huh. the Lord will be with because you. Because God is going to be with you. Skip down to verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Uh -huh. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and, and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye ha inhabitants of Jerusalem. No, what did he say to them? Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. What are you believing? You're believing what the prophet came to you and said, that this battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Believe that. I want you to go to the battle. I want you to go to the position. I want you to go to the battlefield. I don't need you to take no weapons, but I want you to go there. I want you to set yourself, and I want you to believe in the Lord your God. Keep going. So shall ye be established. Uh -huh. believe, in his, believe his prophets. I want you to believe the prophets. Why? So shall ye prosper. You're going to prosper. Skip down to verse 22. Listen to this. And when they began to sing and to praise. Oh, listen here. Now you're comfortable now. They begin to do what? Sing and praise. Sing and praise. And the Lord set ambushments against Let the children say, of Ammon. Let me say, I don't know what song they were singing. I don't know what music they had. They didn't have an organ. They didn't have all of this. But they, I can imagine, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Come on, sing it with me. Told Satan, get thee behind. Victory. Listen, listen, listen. So they got up. They didn't go with war tools. They went with a song and a praise. They didn't go there with a battle plan. They went there with a song and a praise. Victory is mine. 
Victory is mine. They lined up. Victory. When I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt that the Lord will surely bring me out. What did we do? Got down on my knees. Lord, help me, please. Victory today is mine. Come on, let's march to it. So what happened in verse 22? And when they began to sing and to praise. And when they began to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children the of Ammon. The Lord set an ambushment against the children of who? Ammon, and, Moab, and, and, the Mount, and Mount Seir. Which were what? Which were come against Judah. And what happened to them? And they were smitten. They were what? Smitten. They were what? Smitten. They were what? They were what? They were what? They were what? You didn't lift an arm. You didn't lift a weapon. You just sung a praise and a song. And your enemy will be smitten. Hallelujah. Verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. To do what? Utterly to slay and destroy them. And but when, what happened? And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. They begin to destroy each other. They begin to fight each other. Verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth. Dead None bodies escaped. Fallen to the earth. None escaped. And nobody, 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 nobody escaped. My God, you didn't lift up a finger. Your faith is your shield of protection. That's what it is. That's what your faith is. It's your, field, your shield of protection. And you got to believe this. Just a few more verses. I know I should end, but just a few more verses because I want to hammer this thing home. Let's skip over. Let's go over. Let's go over to Matthew, the 14th chapter. We'll read this real quick. Listen to this. And in the fourth watch, in the of, fourth watch of the night, Jesus, Jesus went unto them, walking now, on the sea. Jesus was walking on water. He was walking on water. And when he was walking on water, they looked out and they thought they saw a ghost, mother. But Jesus told them, hey, it's me. Skip down to verse 28. Because Peter, he was a bold one. What did he say? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Uh -huh. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he, what walked, did he, do? he walked on the water. What? Peter say that because he had faith in Jesus. And when Jesus told him to come on out and walk on the water, he walked on the water uh -huh. to go to Jesus. But, but, but what happened though? But when he saw the wind boisterous. See, this is what gets most of us. When the test comes, when the wind became boisterous, amen. You see, we, we, we have the shield of faith, but when that shield of faith is tested, when the wind became boisterous, what happened? He was afraid and, and beginning to sink. What he, did he do? He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Keep and, going. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him. What did he say? O thou of little faith. O thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? Where, why did you doubt? Church, you cannot doubt. You cannot doubt. This is something that God gave Israel in the very beginning. Go over to, 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 to the ninth chapter of Matthew. Ninth chapter of Matthew. One more after this. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Look at verses 27 through 30. Listen and, to this. And because when Jesus, this is the type of faith you're going to have to have, church. Listen to this. And when Jesus departed thence, uh -huh. two blind men followed him, crying and saying, What did he say? Thou son of David. Son have, of David, what? Have mercy on us. Uh-huh. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. Now they following him now because the reason why they following him, because they got faith in Jesus. This is your shield of protection. And they followed him. And what did they say? And Jesus say unto, the, say uh, unto them, uh -huh. 
believe ye that I am able to do this? Number one, you got to do is believe. Believe. Do you believe I can do this? Do you believe I can do this? Keep going. They said unto him, uh-huh. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Now, after they believed, what did he do in verse 29? Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. That's your shield. Your shield is, can only be the protection according to your faith. Your faith is your shield of protection, but your protection is based upon your belief. And your faith is belief. You don't see it. It's the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things hoped for. You don't even see it, but it's there. Amen? But you got to believe it. And if you believe it, the more faith you have in it, the more you believe it, the greater the protection it is. And because of that, I'm able to heal you, even of blindness, because you believe. And this all began with the children of Israel. This faith is not something new. This is something that began right out of Egypt. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter, our last scripture. Listen to this, Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus, the 12th chapter. The children of Israel have been in bondage for 400 and some odd years. They have been in captivity. They've been crying before the Lord. Lord, deliver us. Plagues came. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. But it, when it was time to go, God can only deliver those that believe. Can I say that again? God can only deliver those that believe. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you believe, you're delivered. Believe not, not delivered. That's a mathematical formula. That's a spiritual formula that you should use. If you believe, you're delivered. If you believe, you can be helped. You don't believe, you can't be helped. Exodus, the 12th chapter, read verses 1 through 3. Listen to this. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, uh -huh. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Why? It shall be the first month to you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So what I want you to do. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, uh -huh. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their father, a lamb for a house. Now, he told them this, Brother Kirk, at the beginning of the month. I'm, I'm, I'm showing y'all some faith. I, I'm ending now. He's showing them some faith. Here it is on the very first day of the month. I want you to get a lamb according to the size of your household, and I want you to keep it until the 10th day of the month. And I want you to get a lamb, not to pet. You're going to eat it, by the way. So I want you to get it according to the house of your fathers. I want you to get a lamb for a house. Keep going. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, I want you to get this lamb and I want you to get it together on the 10th. I want you to keep it for four days. And the whole assembly should do what? Kill it. Now, I want you to do something you probably never heard of before. What did he tell them to do? And they shall take of the blood and strike it upon the two posts and I upon the upper posts of the, the houses. Blood, and when you got the door frame around your door, I want you to take the blood from the lamb that you're going to eat. I want you to take the blood. Don't eat the blood because there's life in the blood. There's life in the blood. And, and the shedding of blood is for life. Because the wages of sin, the curse of the law, is death. And only blood, which is life, can restore you. And there's going to be a death angel that comes. And when that death angel comes, if I don't see life on the doorpost, you're going to be in trouble. So when you kill this lamb, I want you to put the blood on the doorpost and on the lintel of the door. Keep going. Wherein they shall eat it. Wherein you shall eat it. Keep going. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Because I'm going to pass through. 
and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of and Egypt. And I'm going to kill everything that's firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. If it's a cat and it was born first, it's dead. If it's little Fifi the Chihuahua, I'm going to kill it too. And the little shadow, shadowing pony that everybody rides, I'm going to kill it too. And your firstborn son, your firstborn daughter, man and beast, I'm going to kill it. Against what? And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. God's I am the Lord. Execute judgment because I am the Lord. Keep going. And the blood shall be to you for a token. But I want you to believe this. I want you to believe this. This is why this is a big debate over in the letters of Paul. It's the blood of Christ is so important because who's going to believe this report? That there's life in this blood. And the blood should be to you for what? For a token uh -huh. up upon the houses where ye are. And what's going to happen? And when I see the blood, what I is will, it going to do? I will pass over you. When I see the blood. Now, that's faith. That's, now, this is some faith here. Oh, this is some faith, Elder McIntosh. This is some faith. If I don't see the blood, rest assured, I'm not going to pass over you. But if I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Amen? And there's going to be a plague that's going to come through at midnight. And this plague is going to enter into every house wherein it does not see the blood. I'm talking about faith. Faith is your shield of what? Protection. It's your shield of protection. See, this started way back. Way back in Egypt. Thank you. This started way back in Egypt. This is nothing new. Faith being the shield of your protection is nothing new. And so what he said was, I want you to put it on the doorpost of the house. And when I see the blood, I'm going to execute judgment. I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill the firstborn, both man and beast. And the blood should be to you for a token upon the houses wherein ye are. And when I what? When I see the blood, what am I, going to do? I will pass over and you. And what's going to happen? And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And he came through that night. He came through. He went to the house of Pharaoh. He went into the house of all of the Pharaoh's leaders. He went everywhere, and there was a great cry that night. In all of Egypt, there was a cry. Why? Because they did not believe. And if there was an Israelite that did not believe, I'm not doing that. Oh, that's just too much. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. It don't take all of that. Yes, it does. It takes everything that God says do. This is why some people say, well, you know, God ain't going to bother me because I put up a Christmas tree. You celebrate your birthday. Oh, you do that if you want to. But when God comes back the second time, He's coming back for judgment. He's here now for salvation. But the second time he comes back, you better believe this. If you believe that what he, would did, what he did back in Egypt, you better believe that what he's going to do. He's already telling the angels, I want you to hold back the winds of the earth. Why? Until I seal the saints of God where? In their forehead. What does he want to do? He don't want to put a mark on your forehead. He ain't putting a barcode on your forehead. No, he's trying to seal you by the way you believe and understand in the heart of your mind. And you better believe it. You better believe this because the slain of the Lord is going to be many. Amen. When he comes, He's coming, and he's going to have blood on his vesture. Why? Because he's coming back for judgment. And if you don't believe that, then you will not have protection because your faith is your shield of protection. You will see a 1,000 fall on one side, 10,000 on another, but not one hair on your head will be touched. This is
his Bible. This is what the prophets are saying. You'll see the eyes of them melt in the holes in their head and their tongue in the root of their mouth. You will see it. But not one thing will touch you. Because why? Your faith is your shield of protection. You can take that to the bank. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you for tuning in to this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. Thank you for our visitors. And we hope and pray that something in this lesson has been said. And this is what I wanted you to take the most out of it. When you are in trouble, when you are going through, get a song and a praise. You may not know what to do. You may not have the tools. You may not have a person to call. But just sit down, sing, and give praise and worship to the Most High. Stand still and see his salvation. Give the Lord a hand. Bless you, bless you, bless you.